incredible story. Anne Summers, uh, we've got the new, the new summer collection here. Um, just tell us in this marketplace wow. where you've clearly taken the brand further up market, a um, lot of retailers suffering, how are you doing on the internet, how is that business going when home entertainment, if you'll forgive me for saying that word, seems to be on the up because people don't want to go out and spend money. Is that right? I must say, before I answer that question, I must tell you something. This is a, 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 I was going to keep it as a secret, but I think I'd share it with you because you've been a fantastic audience. But uh, before I left this morning, um, Andrew kindly gave me a list of all the delegates. And um, so I, I put all of your names into the computers. And I must take this opportunity to thank you for your fantastic support <laughs> over the years. Um, I didn't realise, you know, I, so thank you very much, I appreciate it. And the question, Andrew, the, the, the question, uh, what was the question? Uh, the question was, the question was, uh, how, how are you doing in terms of, uh, what, what interests me is there is no other multiple in the sort of lingerie business that you're in, so to speak. Mm. How have you managed to get to that size and there's no other multiple, number one? And number two, how are you finding this marketplace and is the internet giving you the growth that people would assume it might? Well, I, I, I guess everybody in this room, or most of us, and I mean, there are in a recession, although you know, we're constantly told that we're coming out of a recession, that there are winners and losers. Um, what Ann Summers has found is that uh, party plan, um, and we had 7,000 um, agents, uh, is struggling in, in recession. Um, and, and that, um, and that uh, retail is flat, and that internet is, is the boom business. But of course, it's coming from a, a, a small, uh, a low level. Um, it's, I think it's, uh, the internet is 25% of our entire business. So if you're 10% uh, down on 75% of your business and 25% up in 25% of your business, you're still struggling. The, you know, the total is that you're down. Um, but I'm optimistic. I don't know how the room feels, but uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we are over the worst and that there are green shoots appearing. Um, and that, uh, you know, I'm op optimistic for the future. And the Olympic Stadium, I mean, you've won the stadium for West Ham. Tremendous legacy that you're taking over there. Mm. Two questions. Firstly, will you fill in that running track area but still keep a running track so that spectators can feel closer to the pitch for atmosphere? And number two, if, and, and let's hope this is not the case, but if you were a second division side, would that really concern you after the investment you've made in that stadium? No, there's no doubt that um, if we get relegated, I'm still optimistic that we can survive. Um, it's difficult, um, but there are contingency plans. There is a model. There was always a model. Uh, nobody has a divine right uh, to premiership football. Um, we took over a football club that had £110 million pounds worth of debt. Um, we knew that that meant that, um, uh, that, that there was a, a requirement to reduce the debt, there was a, a requirement to um, bring in players to ensure our premiership status, um, and that's been very difficult. We, by the skin of our teeth, we managed to stay in the premiership last year. We are reducing debt. Um, there's every possible, and we always knew that there was a possibility that we'd get relegated, and our, our model and our plan uh, is in place that in the event that uh, we are relegated, we can sustain um, ourselves in, in the uh, Olympic Stadium. And it has to be remembered that uh, the Olympic Stadium isn't about this year, next year, and a couple of years ahead. Yeah, uh, what we're doing life. here uh, is a legacy uh, for 10 years, for 20 years. I could, I could make a case that, you know, that uh, this, this iconic stadium will be there in 200 years' time. You know, unlike the stadiums uh, in Greece, for example, where, you know, they, they had the Olympics and then it was left to rot. I mean, this will be a vibrant, a very Great vibrant uh, entity. And I'm very optimistic. I mean, you know, just to, for those that, of you, um, you know, this is where I was born. I was born in the East End of London. I was, only, I was born only a couple of miles away from the stadium. So this is very important to me, not just uh, from a financial point of view, but you know, it's, it's my roots, 
Um, so, you know, I want this to work for many, many reasons. And to answer your question about the running track, yes, it's a problem, but you know nothing's perfect in this life. Um, we have to compromise. What we will be going into is the most amazing, iconic stadium that probably the world will have never seen before in the sense that it's going to have billions and billions of people seeing this stadium every day of the week for a month. It's, it just will be... Um, and, and that will become West Ham Stadium. But equally, what goes with that is a responsibility to fulfil the legacy. And the legacy is that you, via the Queen, via the Prime Minister, via... Sebco promised that there would be a legacy and that it wouldn't be torn down as Tottenham Hotspur want to do um, and, and, and that there would be a legacy which means that the running track would have to stay. Now that's not, it's, but it's not beyond the wit of man to construct seating that can be brought nearer to the, uh, the football, to the pitch and then there's enormous areas in the undercroft, underneath the stadium, huge cavernous areas. You could put aeroplanes in there, it's so big. And um, so that you could take these sections up uh, during the summer, put them in the undercroft, and then you could have your athletics, you could have your um, concerts, and um, most importantly, uh, athletics. Wonderful. I'm sure that's going to go really well. A last point of the day, uh, and a very special, iconic um, object just about to be brought in. 72 hours' time, of course, it is the FA Cup final between Manchester City and Stoke City. Mm -hmm. And there have been uh, four FA Cups, the first of which was stolen in 1895. Uh, the FA were rightly furious, and they fined Aston Villa 25 quid for losing that trophy. Rightly so. Um, for a replacement trophy. The second FA Cup, the second of only four ever in history, um, was bought at Christie's uh, for an awful lot more than 25 quid a few, go a few years ago by David here. And I'm delighted to say that we do have that second FA Cup. And if you'd kindly bring it in, we just want to ask some questions. <laughs> So you bought this trophy for Britain. Just tell us the story of that and what the FA Cup means to you and to all the football fans of Britain. Well, first of all, I think what I'd like to share with you, there's a lot of people that claim that I bought it only because I've never been able to win it uh, <laughs> with, with a number of football clubs that I've been with over the years. Now, what happened is a bizarre story in that um, this cup had been locked away in a vault um, it was given, it was awarded to a chap called Lord Kinnear, a very um, distinguished player and member of the FA for many years. Uh, and this would have been at, um, just at the turn of the century, uh, probably um, 1910 or something like that. And since then, it's been locked away in a vault. Um, and he died and, um, and it was brought out and put up for sale by the family at Christie's. And I'm not a collector, I have to confess, I am not a collector. But I, I was told that it was on, uh, up for sale and that, that the possible uh, uh, bidders were the British uh, Football Museum. But they had limited funds and they, they came to me and said, look, we, we think that this, this is going, we've only got £300,000 to buy this and we're likely, it's likely to go for more. And I'm thinking, I'm sure it's going to go for more. I can't believe that this trophy is going to, you know, be, go for, for £300,000. And then there was a rumour that Abramovich uh, was looking to purchase it and that uh, a, a, German, a German hotel was looking to buy it as a centrepiece in their foyer. It was a sports hotel. And um, I, I just listened in. And I, I had somebody go to Christie's and, and, and he said, yes, uh, it's, it's at 250,000. And, um, and then he said to me that uh, it just gone past 300,000 and sure enough, um, the museum had dropped out. And now I'm beginning to think that where's it likely to go? Then we hear that, that Abramovich isn't 
bidding for it because I have to tell you, if Abramovich is bidding for it, nobody's going to get it. I promise you he's going to be the one to get it. Um, but we are left with two bidders, an American bidder and a German bidder. And I'm thinking, any moment the FA are going to come in charging down the gangway, waving their banner, and they will save it for Britain. No, not true. Then I'm thinking, maybe the Premier League will come along. After all, you know, they've, uh, they've just done a new deal for £3 billion. Surely they can afford to save this, because it looked like it was going out of the country. And then my guy said to me, it's at um, 420000 and it's only the German left. I'm thinking, where is everybody? I really don't want to buy this, you know. I really, this is, I'm not a collector. Plus, it's a lot of money. <laughs> and uh, and I, I actually became emotionally involved. It's very strange, you know, you're sitting there and you're seeing this trophy, this magnificent trophy, um, leaving the country. And he said, it's 420 with you. So I said, OK, 420, hoping I'll get it for 420. No, it's with him at 450. It's, so it's, it's now with him at 450. And I have to tell you that it really was a feeling, I cannot let this happen. I cannot let this happen. Um, it's, it, you can imagine in the, in, in, that this amazing trophy is going to be in, in all of you know, in the one country, the country that keeps beating us at football, <laughs> the bloody thing's going to end up in Germany. I just couldn't do it. So when he said, it's with you at 500,000, I said, yes, and he said, it's yours. Very good. Great start. <laughs> but it is for sale for 510 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I'm only joking. OK, David, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we really hope you avoid the relegation drop. Thank you. Thank you much. for buying this trophy Thank for you. the country, and I wish you every success in the future. Thank Ladies you Ladies and gentlemen, much. David Gold.